there. Dan, the culinary libertarian here. I want to talk about focaccia. I posted a recipe on the blog about a week ago, and what I really think we need to have is a look at what the dough is. Bread doughs, we've made bread doughs, they're stiff, they hold their shape, and they don't go very far when we just leave them on the counter. Wet doughs like focaccia and ciabatta, well, they're a new kind of a dough, a little bit more challenging to work with because they're sticky. They don't have the kind of flour that a bread dough has, so they're amorphous. They're a little bit runny and gooey, but that's a good thing. We want that to be the case because all of that water is going to give the yeast some room to play because the more water there is, the less flour there is. So there's more, there's less gluten going on, more room for big air bubbles, and that's the kind of thing we want to see in a focaccia. Uh, in the recipe on the blog, there is a notation for a thing called a chef. Uh, in French, baking, the sourdough breads are started with something called the chef. There's also, the Italians have a thing called a biga. There's also a starter called a poulish. You probably have heard them called mothers. Fundamentally, they're all the same in the fact that they bring flavor to the bread while they're fermenting. So mine is really runny. Uh, it looks kind of like a milkshake. It's not, I promise you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have been known to eat these, not in mass quantities, but to taste them to determine their sourness. Uh, it's plenty sour. The yeast that I used in mine, now, let me back up one second. Usually, a starter is going to be made with flour and water. Mix them together, let them sit out for an uh, for overnight, and in the environment, there's wild yeast. It's everywhere. It's going to be in the flour and in the air when you're mixing that. And slowly, the yeast say, hey, we got food. Let's make some more yeast. And that's where the yeast comes in on a non-yeast-added starter. I made beer a few weeks ago, and at the bottom of the carboy was all of this residual stuff, which included all of the spent yeast from making the beer. I said to myself, self, what if we use this yeast for bread? So I did. So the starter was made with some of that spent beer yeast, so it's so it's got a little bit of a beery aroma to it, but it doesn't show up in the bread. But it was a fun experiment, and it kind of worked. So I'm a little bit stoked about that. So what I'm going to do is take this dough, put it on this sheet pan that you can't see. Ta-da! Sheet pan. I have oiled the sheet pan pretty well with extra virgin olive oil. There's extra virgin olive oil inside the dough because I want it uh, oil or butter or fat of any kind gets in the way of all of those long strands of gluten. We, uh, if you've ever had Scotch or Scottish shortbread cookies, they're called shortbread for the obvious reason, well, maybe less obvious. The butter gets in the way of those strands of gluten. And instead of long strands of gluten, they're short strands of gluten. And when they're short strands of gluten, they break more easily. Think about really great French bread. We have to pull it apart. That's the gluten kind of acting like protein and rubber bands holding that together. Get a lot of fat in there, and those gluten rubber bands don't hold together as well. That's what we have going on here. I also like the flavor of the olive oil in the focaccia, and being that it's an Italian thing, it sort of works out well. I'm gonna pause here. Get this dough on the pan and show you what I'm talking about when we talk about folding the focaccia. It's kind of funny, it's a little sticky, but that's how it goes. All right, here is the very sticky dough. And it really is, it's, it is sticky, no kidding. So handy dandy bowl scraper, get all that stuff out of there, all right. 
Now, here is my big blob of dough. And I've gotten a little oil on my hands. It doesn't look like much now, but what I want to do, it's going to, even with the oil in there, when we pull it, it comes back. That's the gluten doing its thing. Its job is to be a protein and pull back. So I'm not upset that that's doing that. I'm counting on that for later. One time there, one time there, simple little letter fold, flip onto the bottom side so oil is all the way around. And really, that's it. I'm going to cover this pan uh, where I am in Oregon. It's cool. At, it's cold at night, quite frankly, and it's kind of cool in the daytime. So my garage is a perfect refrigerator. I'm going to leave it out there. And in the course of the next 18 hours, it's going to start to ferment. That's the big fancy baking word for what the yeast is doing in here. It's, it's doing its job. It's eating the food, which is the flour. It's burping and making lots of gas. And it's also making more yeast. Tomorrow, it's going to be nice and full. I'm going to do the same thing. Stretch it out of the pan. Fold, fold, turn. One more day in the garage. Then on Sunday, it's baking time. And I will see you on Sunday. And Day two of the focaccia. So yesterday we left it, it was nice and small. It got all nice and fat and big. There we go. Um, I pulled the plastic off. I'm going to brush a little olive oil on top and on my fingers so that it doesn't stick to the dough too much. And we're going to do the same thing we did yesterday. A letter style fold. Turn it and flip it over, oil, plastic again, and into the refrigerator, which I call my garage because it's cold outside. So here we go. It's going to take a little bit of playing with to get it off of the pan, but focaccia, since it's going to be flat, doesn't really need a round shape so we have some some room to play I need a handy dandy love these things a little bit of extra oil for the fingers and so the dough is very sticky you have to be a little zen and move faster than the dough sticks. And see what I did? I forgot my oil. So we're going to do that now. And then we'll just, Whew, there we go. Yeah, sometimes it isn't gorgeous, but not all food needs to be gorgeous. It just needs to taste good. And that's going to be the case here. So, kind of in the middle, ready to go. And that's it until tomorrow. Tomorrow, same thing. Pull, fold, turn, and then plastic, but then it stays at room temperature. I'm going to let it rest and proof, get warmer. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of fresh marjoram and black pepper and kind of chunkier than kosher salt. It's like pretzel salt. Um, for that nice crunch of salt and yumminess and a little olive oil on top and in the oven it goes So we'll see you tomorrow. Hey there, Dan the Libertarian Culinarian Day three of focaccia. So it's sitting right here. There it is. I've got my handy dandy oil right here and a little bit on top And that's gonna do it. We had I had talked about giving a pull and fold and from it one more time but I'm not going to do that I am going to loosen it from the pan just to make sure it's not sticking and then as it is it's going to be what we do with it so there it is a nice big air bubbles from lots of fermentation action and I've got some uh, where's the light there we go marjoram chopped marjoram uh, it is the real deal marjoram not oregano and I'm going to use some pretzel salt on top and just a little bit of oil to make sure everything is 
good to go. So it's degassing a little bit. Well, that's just what's going to happen when you handle the dough. So we're going to handle it as lightly as we can. And then a little more oil, I'll just sort of punch, punch, push little dimples into the dough. Push it to the corners. Help it stretch out. And you're going to use your fingers to find the thin spots versus the thick spots. Spread it around a little bit and then your dough will be ready to rock and roll. And on top goes the herbs. Yum yum. Marjoram is one of my favorites. I'm gonna put this in my proofer, which is this thing right here. It's a little tabletop proofer, proofer by Broad and Taylor. And there's one of these on the blog page. I'm bending over because I'm kind of tall compared to the counter. I'm not tall. And when it proofs up nice and fat, it's gonna go in the oven and bake, and then we'll take a look at it then. So, focaccia is proofed and ready to go. Something moved outside the window. So let's take a look inside. Here is the proofed dough in the little proofer. Even though it's a little bit far from the edges, it got nice and fluffy. Fluffy. Well, it proofed. That's what it's supposed to do. Moving that aside, so out comes the dough and onto the counter. Now, I had said sea salty things, pretzel salt. Pretzel salt is a little bit more coarse than kosher salt. Kosher salt is fine. This is at the bulk section of my local grocery store. Kosher salt's fine. If you can't get this, don't sweat it. It's not that big a deal. Uh, I'm going to put some olive oil on top and see if I can do that with one hand. It's a very noisy bottle. So drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. I don't mind a fairly olive oily, hmm, Popeye, olive oily focaccia, and then salt, and I'm going to put pepper on that, and here's the pushing down part. Not all focaccias are going to get the finger treatment. Uh, this one will because it's not getting any condiment and garnish on top. No onions, no tomatoes, no zucchini, nothing but the herbs and the salt and pepper. So it's a little pushy, 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 push. And I can feel that thing. That's where, there we go. Yep. I can feel that it is lots of big bubbles in there and some less big bubbles in there, which would be small. Uh, what that's going to give me is when it's baked, that nice uh, inconsistent crumb, which is the inside of the bread. I like a focaccia that has big holes and small holes. Uh, some focaccias are more bread-like in their consistency. It's not this wet. The focaccia al genovese would be one of those kinds of things, which is a little bit more bread-like, or kind of, it's not cakey, but it is a focaccia that can be uh, baked on a stone, not in a pan, so it's not as wet as this one is. But um, I like this one instead, so that's what I make. Pepper in the oven, and we'll see you when it comes out. Bye.